Ripple Effect, sponsored by Suez. When it comes to water, there's no doubt that this generation will face a number of complex issues across the planet. However, getting better at how we use water in every aspect of our lives will produce tangible, long-term results. For many, many years, waste treatment plants were always seen as, you know, a necessary evil uh, and a cost center, right? It's, we got to spend money to treat that water. But the consumer themselves, they want to know, how is my utility thinking about resource recovery? Here's very interesting about our facility, one of the things that makes us different. A unique opportunity came up with Covana Energy. At their facility, they use a lot of water. We began to discuss the potential of them reusing our water instead of using potable water. Instead of going out to the river, we take it, we treat it, and use it as makeup water, saving a million gallons of service water a day. Delcora's next door neighbor is Covanta Energy, a waste to energy power plant that takes in trash from as far as New York City and uses it to produce electricity for the region. Prior to this partnership, Covanta used water from the city's drinking supply. Comes from the tank right over there, Delcora, underground, and runs into this tank here. The water goes in, it's pumped into the plant. Once they go through the screen, they get pumped through uh, the UF filter. Cleaning over a million gallons of water a day represents water purification on an industrial scale. Ultrafiltration and reverse osmosis technology help remove dissolved material and solids in the wastewater by forcing it through a variety of membranes. At the end of this process, the treated water flowing through Covanta's cooling tower is cleaner than most drinking water. Covanta's water reuse is part of a much larger process going on behind the scenes that helps reduce the impact we have on our planet's ecology. We are on the tipping floor. We probably have close to 8,000 tons of waste. If we stopped taking waste in right now, within three days, this would all be gone. Whereas if you went to a landfill and you dumped this in a landfill, it'd be there for 100 years. As you can see from the equipment we have behind us, this is not your grandfather's incinerators of days of the past where you just burned the waste and you had a black smoke coming out of a stack here. With our equipment on the back end, we're able to maintain within our compliances 99.99% of the time. If you compare it to a landfill, which has the methane gases, it's just 20 times more potent as anything that we put out. I mean, really what they're doing, taking trash and turning into energy, I mean, that's like such a win-win, it's unbelievable. So a water treatment plant is cleaning and selling its reused water to a waste-to-energy plant that's converting trash into electricity. The question is, why aren't more people doing this? The short answer is, they are. In countries strapped for land and resources, partnerships like these exist on a large scale. Enter Denmark's Kallenborg Symbiosis, a series of partnerships across 49 different companies and industries that take what Delcora and Covanta are doing to the next level. The Kalambo symbiosis is actually fairly unique, um, probably because it actually evolved over time. The initial project started in 1961 and, and we never really had a blueprint. Water was the initial project uh, and it was the driver of the whole industrial symbiosis here in Kalambo. What started over 50 years ago has grown into what is known as an industrial ecosystem. This is where waste byproducts from one industry are used as a resource by another. 
essentially you you disregard the notion of waste and in that sense you're trying to mimic nature that you look at all the resources in a holistic way in nature there is no such thing as garbage all output becomes input in a different part of the natural ecosystem in this way a falling leaf becomes part of the soil the same principle is applied in the kalamborg symbiosis so it's part of the dna in the way we work and think we need to produce more from less and that's what we have been doing actually in Kalamborg for many years now we're just getting even better at it when you can come to a problem and bring so many different perspectives and experiences to it, first of all, you'll probably come up with a better answer, but you're going to learn a lot more in the process. So we're actually seeing the need for these types of solutions that are aimed at water usage, energy conservation. We're seeing it everywhere. It doesn't matter the geography. It doesn't matter the industry. There's no one solution fits all. So you have to make local arrangements um, and I think that's quite essential that you allow that and that you allow these partnerships to grow. Our engineering staff will talk to their engineering staff. Our laboratory staff will talk to their counterpart in technical services. I think it's a good model for other industries to take, take a look at what they're doing with their neighbors and uh, try to work together to improve uh, you know, the environment as well as uh, business together. The most important thing is actually to build those partnerships because we don't hold all the answers. The companies actually do that themselves. Uh, but bringing people together and uh, uh, building these partnerships, they, uh, they inspire a lot of new technologies and new innovations.